what artificial sweeteners are actually doing to your body. I want to have an important conversation about artificial sweeteners. Most humans, including myself, love eating sweet things, yet we know that they're not good for our health. So we did what humans always do. We came up with an artificial version of it. What does this do? Well, it gives us the promise of not gaining weight. It won't ruin our skin or teeth. This seemed like great news, right? It was game on. These products started showing up everywhere. They were in our foods, in our drinks, and even in our personal care products. Think toothpaste. Have you ever found one that didn't have a fake sweetener in it? This is not a mom and pop thing. This is huge industry. It's worth billions, and by 2027, it's expected to double. Every other week, there seems to be a new version that promises to be better than the rest. But they all have one thing in common, one big lie. They all claim to be a healthier alternative to sugar. But are they? Are they really healthier than sugar? Are some better than the others? Will some of them actually kill us? It's really confusing. I get it. It seems like every day they, and I'm not sure who they are, tell us something different. So who should we believe? I've been in this space for over 40 years, helping people lose weight. Everyone from Hollywood actors to rap stars and rock stars, professional truck drivers and professional athletes. I've seen every gimmick come and go. There's nothing that will surprise me. So I'm going to unravel the artificial sweetener conundrum for you in this video, because not only is it important for your weight loss, it's also very important for your health. Be sure to stick around until the very end because I'm gonna blow your mind, giving you some truths that really go against everything you've been told you were supposed to do to lose weight. This information is gonna help you lose weight and feel way, way better. So stick around. So let's dive right in. Artificial sweeteners are non-nutritive. What does that mean? It means that they provide very little or zero calories and they have no vitamins or minerals. Make no mistake, Sweeteners are not food. Here are some examples of artificial sweeteners. Aspartame, Asosulfame K, Sucralose, Neotame, Advantame, and Saccharin. These are all chemical sweeteners approved by the FDA. However, people who have stopped using these sweeteners have noticed improvements in obesity, meaning they lost weight, migraines, meaning they went away, depression, IBS, and so on. While some artificial sweeteners are thought to be carcinogenic, and there's a great deal of debate over that these days, there's some less serious but very unpleasant side effects. They can all cause horrible gas, bloating, diarrhea. They've actually been shown to cause irritation of the bladder in some people, especially if you eat too much of it, and we all tend to eat too much of this stuff. Maybe it's because we feel like we're having our cake and eating it too. Let me get into a little story here. A couple of years ago, I was at a large keto convention, and of course I was in the expo area where people have all the new products. As I walked through, everyone wanted me to try their new keto product. In order to make these products taste sweet without using sugar, they use fake sweeteners. I would accept the products and tell these people I would eat it later because I knew what it would do to my stomach. Here comes the gross part. About 20 minutes later, I went to the men's room and I opened up a stall and noticed that the toilet was just wrecked with diarrhea. So I walked to the next stall and it was the same thing. And so was the third stall and so on. I couldn't understand why everyone was getting sick. And then it occurred to me, oh wait, they're out in the expo area trying all these products. They're getting the gas, they're getting the bloat, and yes, they were getting the diarrhea. So let's talk about stevia, monk fruit, and allulose. They're the natural ones, right? So they have to be better than the artificial ones. Well, let's take a look at each one of them. Here's a little known and even less cared for fact about stevia. Stevia in its natural form is not approved for use in the United States as a food additive. As a result, all stevia in the U.S. is highly processed using GMO byproducts, chemical solvents, and other sweeteners, yet they still call it all natural. The same is true for monk fruit, Take Truvia, for instance, a product that uses monk fruit. It goes through a 42-step process just to turn it into a sweetener. It also contains erythritol, a sugar alcohol that we'll talk about later. Allulose is a naturally occurring sugar that can be found in many plants, but commercially, they extract it from corn. Allulose can be considered natural because it comes from a plant, 
and it's sourced from a plant. However, it's technically a synthetic sweetener, or to use the FDA's words, a natural sweetener manufactured artificially. Just an interesting side note, allulose is not approved in Canada or Europe. These companies with their sweeteners make us think that we're getting something healthy, something that's going to help us lose weight just because they're using plant extracts. But just like other sweeteners, they can cause gastrointestinal distress, bloating, and diarrhea. And perhaps more importantly, they do nothing to lessen our sugar cravings. Since we're not training our palates to crave less sweetness, it actually makes it worse. They don't get us off the sugar train. Next, there are sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohol actually has a few calories, but it's negligible and is less sweet than sugar. So in order to put it in, say, a keto product, you would have to put a lot more to get the same effect. Here are a few examples of sugar alcohols. Mannitol, erythritol, sorbitol, xylitol, lactitol, and maltitol. We don't really use sugar alcohols in cooking. It's mainly used in processed foods. There's actually no alcohol or sugar in them, but chemically, they're mimicking sugar. The food industry is doing a real magic trick by subtracting sugar alcohols from total carbohydrates. You see, at some point, everyone figured out that carbohydrates were making us fat. So the food industry first said, okay, we will subtract fiber from total carbs and call it a net carb gain. Now they're doing the same thing to lower the net carbs even more by subtracting the sugar alcohols. This is a trick, folks. The trick is there to make you think that you will be healthier and lose weight. Nothing could be further from the truth. So are they harmful? A recent study showed that erythritol is much more dangerous to our health than we originally thought. The same study showed that people had a higher chance of stroke and heart attack just by using erythritol. So where do we stand on artificial sweeteners when it comes to blood sugar spikes, the brain, and insulin? All these sweeteners are purported to be great for diabetics, people on keto diets, people trying to lose weight and inflammation, and so on and so forth. The claim is that they don't cause an insulin response, therefore they're safe. A recent study showed that just the anticipation of food can cause an insulin response. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're not even thinking about food, you're walking through a mall, and all of a sudden you come up on the food court. You weren't thinking about food, but now you're salivating. That's a response. That's our body getting ready to accept food. It will cause insulin to rise. The same thing can happen when we're having fake sugars. Even though we're not having sugars, remember the calories don't count here, in layman terms, it's telling our systems, hey, you need to get to work because I'm having something sweet here. And now for a little something extra, I'm going to talk about natural sugar substitutes. For years, we've been told that these are good for you because they're natural. And lately, that theory has become more popular because of all of the bad news around the artificial sweeteners. We're thinking that the natural sweeteners are way better. I think we can all get behind the fact that processed foods are not good for us. Therefore, we automatically think that natural is always good for us. There are a lot of things that are natural. Cocaine is natural. Heroin is natural. Spent uranium is natural. And yes, of course, sugar is natural. I just gave you four natural things, yet none of them are good for your health. In fact, they can and do kill us. So what am I talking about when we're talking about natural sugars that are commonly known as healthy? What are they? Brown sugar, turbinado sugar, cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and agave. And these sugars are considered even better. Honey, maple syrup, coconut sugar, date sugar, fruit juice sweetened. Make no mistake, these super duper natural sugars are no better than any other sugar. Your liver works as a meritocracy. When you eat these, not only will you get a sugar spike, you will get an insulin response. These sugars are not helping you in any way, shape, or form. You're here because you care about your health. We know that the manufacturers are not telling us the truth. Stealing our money is one thing, but stealing our health, well, that's just diabolical. You can learn more by watching my video, What a High Sugar Diet is Actually Doing to Your Body.